What's going on? We are back. Once again, this is part two. And on our previous video, a quick recap. What did we talk about? We basically talked about how we left the Jehovah's Witness um, organization and how we became Jehovah's Witnesses. You yeah. know, all the things. If you haven't watched it yet, you need to go click back, watch that one, because this is going to be a part two. And basically yep. the aftermath of leaving. Yep, so we'll get right into it. The aftermath. Picking up. Now, us technically, by the rules of the organization, we're labeled inactive. Yeah, technically. We were never... Well, I had my disfellowship story, but I was reinstated, and then I was inactive. Mm -hmm. And then, babe, you were. Yeah, I was never disfellowshipped or dissociated or anything like that, so... Yeah, so we, we basically did what they call a fade. And we want to cover something. A lot of people, I'm going to say it's a mistake. It's more of what works for you. But a lot of the time, so you first wake up and your first instinct is, I need to write a letter and I need to disassociate because that's something the organization teaches. They tell you yeah. to do that. They make sure to put that in your head. I feel like just in case something like this does end up happening, mm -hmm. they have a good reason to you know, basically shun you from the Kingdom Hall. Yeah, because a lot of the times people, I don't think, realize the, by the rule book, if you disassociate, the same rules apply by if you were disfellowship. Exactly. So you're basically shunned, family can't talk to you, Right. and you know you have to go through that whole process. And a lot of the times, when you write the full letter, they don't even read the full letter detail for detail. So you can explain, I went through this teaching and this, this, and that. They don't care. They are, the <laughs> elders are taught. Once you see that this is a letter saying that they are against Jehovah or against the organization, as as they call, that's it. That's all you need to see. They done. And a lot of times we we might feel like, all right, I need to explain to the elders. And yes. you don't realize that's something you've been taught for years and years. Everything you do, the, the elders in the congregation need to know all your business. So Absolutely. even when you wake up and you don't want to be a part of it, you still feel like, I need to let the elders know. Mm -hmm. You don't. And not just that, you almost feel like this sense of like, I have to, I have to explain how I got here, like, and basically prove to them I'm not a bad person. But it yeah. doesn't matter what you do, what you're saying. If exactly. if to them it looks like you're turning your back on the organization, mm -hmm. it looks they they also process it like, okay, you're turning your back on Jehovah. So they yeah. don't care about any of the research that you've done. You're, you know, it's not going to yeah. go any farther than that. So you might as well just. Bounce, Maybe. yeah, yeah, and that's that's whatever works for you. And a lot of the times, it's it's the beginning stages of waking up where you feel like, you know, I need to explain myself. And then down the line, you be like, I don't have to tell y'all nothing. And I don't. So basically, there is like, what one, two, three, like four different ways that you can kind of leave the organization. It's yeah. fading, which is what we did. There's dissociating, where you write in the letter and then you give it to your elders and they make an announcement and everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's this fellowshipping where it's in their hands and they take you out. Yeah. And then there's people who are considered PIMOs, which is basically you're physically in and you're still doing the things, going about the motions, mm -hmm. but mentally you know what's going on and you're mentally out. Physically in, yeah. mentally out. Now what do you think of make a person become a PIMO? If they have a lot of family in the organization or they have a lot of things to lose, yep. like I cannot imagine my entire family being in the organization and my whole life being in there. Exactly. All of my friends, all of my family, if you have any businesses within the organization, yep, that, cost. that is your entire life. So it makes complete sense on why people will stay physically in, yep. but um, they know better. I actually know somebody who's like that. Like one yeah. of our, one of um, my friends from, one of my old friends from the Keenum Hall. Mm -hmm. I remember him messaging me about it, and he's like, "Yeah, but I just can't tell my family." Yeah. <laughs> I was we know like, a few that people is like so that. So sad. Yeah, a lot of people when you share this type of content, or even like when we we first woke up, we had group chats, and some of the people yeah. in the chats still went to the meetings and stuff, but they knew everything. They knew. Some of the things they knew was more than what we knew. Yep. But it, it comes down to, you know, you don't want to upset your family or, or mm -hmm. you don't want to be alone. A lot of the times it could also be you just not ready, you to know, to, to be the outcast. Yes. It, it is yeah. such a big change to do something your whole life and then mm -hmm. find out this information and you want to live in your truth as well. And it's right. just hard to go about day to day life, you know, doing that or leaving yeah, and it, it can be stressful trying to balance out both. I can't, 
I know once we woke up, that was it. Like, we didn't go yeah. to not one more meeting after that. And I can't imagine what it's like just sitting there. We sat there with questions in the back of our mind, but we never yes. sat there just flat out knowing, like, this ain't right. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we also kind of had it a little easier just because um, whenever we did wake up, it was, like, in the middle of COVID. Yep. So that, w that made it, like, an easy transition to leave. Yeah, because we already were somewhat inactive before COVID hit. We were already, like, not regular at the meetings because we were exhausted. And then yeah. by the time, like Lexi said, by the time it was Zoom meetings, it was, like, hit and miss. And then half the people was only dressed from the waist up anyway. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I wouldn't up. even be. I'd be like, shut that camera off and right. don't show me. <laughs> exactly. This is where things can get really serious. The aspect of waking up can... It affects everybody differently, I guess, depending on how yeah. deep you were in the organization. But it's literally the rug snatched from under your feet because I know when I first had learned the information that I learned about the organization, I was in shock. I was still curious to learn more and more, but I was just like, just staring off in the space, basically like, man, what is, what is life? And it feel like it's the end of the world. And I promise you, you might be at this phase right now watching this video or you experienced it or you may go through it if you you know are just now starting to wake up. It is a terrifying feeling, but it's temporary. I promise you. It'll and, be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. And, <laughs> and that's what somebody had told me. They were, were ahead of me, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to be kind of messed up for a little bit, but you, you're going to be all right. Everything is cool after that. And a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, this is where people take their own lives and all type of things because they feel like it's the end of the world, and there's just nothing nothing else out there for them, but I promise you, it's, it's going to be okay. And you, in a way, it is kind of like the end of your world, you know, especially yeah. if you have your whole community, like within the Jehovah's Witness organization, your family, your friends, everybody, yeah. and then you know what you're losing whenever you, you wake up, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know exactly what you're losing. You know people right. are not going to be, you know, inviting you places. They're not going to be around you. Like, yep. so, and it's crazy because I feel like I was even going through some of that before I actually woke up, like, yeah. because I wasn't as regular to the meetings anymore. I remember having, like, one of my um, best friends at the time, like, she had, like, kind of cut me off. Like, she mm -hmm. unfollowed me on Instagram, like, social medias and stuff. She had unfollowed yeah. And I remember messaging her, and I'm like, what is this about? You know what I mean? Right. And she basically had marked me as like bad association. Yep. And at that time I hadn't done anything wrong. Right. <laughs> Not yet. You know what yeah. I mean? But wrong in their eyes. Yeah, I hadn't done the... anything, but she, I remember that. And I'm like, this is just, this is a crazy life. Like yeah. how is it that you're supposed to be my friend? Like, mm -hmm. I, I think I just think of the word friendship as different. Like I, I don't care even what you believe in, if I consider you my friend, it doesn't matter. That, that's what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I have love for you. And we support. You know, if my friend wants to decide he wants to be Amish and he feel like that worked for him and his family, then I support it. Yeah. But you notice the main word we always hear is friends. Yes, friends. Welcome to the meeting, friends. friends. So we call literally everybody yes. our friend, even a stranger we never met, which in what world... Is this person walking down the street you never met a friend that you're supposed to risk your and life your for? your brother, and, your yeah. sister. Like, they really have a play on words where they mm -hmm. make it seem like you are, like, you're there, like, they are there for you and you're supposed yeah. to be there for them. Like, we call each other, like, they called each other brothers and sisters, you know what I mean? Yeah, but in so, reality. And they would always use the term agape love. Right. If you look up the, like, term agape love, it's like love without any, um... It's like unconditional. Yeah, like unconditional love. But obviously, the love has conditions. So how is it that yeah. you can use that word? It's like they do, they really do get into your head. Yeah. <laughs> and this, you want to know, speaking of that that topic, I had a cousin that I grew up with. We were always so close. And when I was this fellowship, he was one of the people that randomly called me one night. Like, man, I just want to hear your voice. Man, I miss you, blah, blah, blah. And then I came back and we were tight. But when I came back, I noticed he was doing things that he wasn't supposed to be doing. Yeah. But he, at the same time, he was be trying to become, you know, a ministerial servant. And when I say stuff he wasn't supposed to be doing, he would be this fellowship type stuff. <laughs> and the crazy thing, once I woke up and he realized I didn't believe in this stuff anymore, he unfriended me. And I'm just <laughs> like, you did stuff that I would never do. And... <laughs> You got the nerve to look down on me because I don't believe what you believe. But that's how it works, though. And yeah. It's, 
it's like, okay, they're not really your friends. You're right. the only reason that they actually are your friends in this moment is because you guys are following the same God and the same rules to where you get in trouble for not being having that so-called friendly attitude yeah. with people. But it's almost like you can't, you know, like if you're in this situation right now or going through that, yeah. just have in mind, something that helped me is like having in mind that it really isn't 100% their fault. Um, right. I don't want to use trigger words like brainwashing and stuff, but like mm -hmm. it's in your head. You were taught it from the beginning yeah. to like act this way. And this is how you're being yeah. faithful to God. So, you're indoctrinated. That's the word. That's you know yeah. what I like that. Yeah, because yeah, we were there too at one point. Like we, when we weren't ready to hear certain information, when think about the first time you heard something that was called you know apostate thinking or material, you like whoa whoa whoa, what, what you talking about? Yeah. So when and it's other scary. people, yeah, so we understand like when other people they hear things and they you know are always in denial and they have a a counter for every single thing that's wrong. Well, you know we're imperfect and it's like. We were taught in the reasoning book replies and rebuttals. Mm -hmm. If somebody in service says this, just say this. Yep. And it's crazy when you explain stuff to people and they say the exact same things from the book. And it's like, you don't even, you wouldn't even have thought to say that if you didn't read a book that told you to say that. Yeah, it's, yeah. there's no thinking for yourself involved because you are so busy and you are so tired down and they tell uh -huh. you exactly what to say they tell you exactly where to look at mm. um if these things happen so it's just kind of scripted it's like yeah it's like working at a job and you have a script for every little thing that you might come in contact with they're not yeah. actually thinking for themselves exactly so if you are in that part where you feel lost just understand what you are missing out on is not personal like these people are doing what they feel is the correct thing to do and they haven't taken the time to like we said before you realize something may not be right you look into something not being right you realize it's not right and then it's like I need to tell somebody but the person you tell them may not have went through all those steps yeah. they, they haven't even realized something is wrong yet. we actually have a story <laughs> <laughs> from when we were at my mom's house this one time and this this literally shows how indoctrinated we were but right. she had come home with um sage to like cleanse the house and mm -hmm. at this time we were all witnesses including my mom but my mom's always had like alternative thinking yeah. and she was just she didn't want to disappoint the family but anyway so she had come home with sage and what was it was it incense it wasn't instant. It was an instant holder with Buddha. It was an instant holder. Yeah, yeah. with a picture of Buddha on it or whatever. Or yeah. a craving of Buddha. Yeah. Yes. And um, I remember when she came home with that, we looked at each other and we were like, oh my gosh, that's satanic. Like, yep. we need to get rid of that. What did you do, babe? Yeah, we got rid of it. We threw it out. <laughs> he threw it away. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, we're not going to deal with these boogie woogies. <laughs> and then from looking at then to now, we are heavy in the spirituality and and saging every morning and, and it's just funny like everything that you think is wrong is just because somebody told you hey man that's wrong but yeah. you never actually look into it right but you know that's kind of how it is and the the main thing to understand about waking up remember how you felt at the height of your what we, we'll call it witness spirituality when you were the most witness spiritual you felt like you was chosen like out of all these people in the world you are chosen to have this type of information yeah. But waking up is realizing it's the opposite. When you wake up, you are pretty much chosen out of all these all these millions of witnesses. You were the one to realize, wait a minute, something ain't, something ain't right. So only so many of us, all of us that's on here sharing our stories and in the comments and watching this, this content, we yeah. are the ones that are actually special because we realize I got my whole life ahead of me. I can do whatever I want to do in my life. I don't yeah. have to wait for so-and-so to tell me what I can and can't yeah. do, and understanding that helps, you know, with your with your mental health. Understand, it's it's okay. Yeah. It's alright to look. Now we look crazy to and everybody that's okay. else. It's that's okay. okay. But you know yeah. what? It kind of helped because as a Jehovah's Witness, you look kind of crazy to the outside population <laughs> anyway. So um, we're just navigating that same kind of space, and yeah. we do want to say like we really do feel blessed because we are younger and we did wake up at this time and i'm so happy Thanks. even for the people that um are older and were able to escape the organization like i'm so happy for you because yeah. 
it doesn't matter how much time you have left. It's just like you still got time. Yeah, you still have time, yeah. and that's that's great. And at the same time, think of it. Everybody wakes up when it's meant for you to wake up. I'm yeah. a strong believer on everything that happened in life was supposed to happen. Like me and Lexi being witnesses is how we ended up meeting. If we were never yes. into that for that time period, we wouldn't have met and got to this point in our lives. It, yeah. We would, so however long you were in the organization, it was for a reason. Maybe it was meant to keep you away from a certain situation or certain people at a certain time. Like who knows? Exactly. And and, and look at yourself now. You a lot more aware. You're not so quick to just be told things because you experienced something in life that had you so controlled to now where somebody tell you something, you're like, let me let, let me, me think about yeah, that. Let me, let me do my that. research on that. Yeah. That's what I feel happy about. That's why I always yep. say I don't regret it. Like regardless of Yeah. It might have done like, you know, damage like in myself and everything, but being right. able to get over those things mentally, it's it's made me into a better person Facts. and it's made me into a person that does critically think about everything presented right. to me. I'm not just going to blindly be handed something. And it mm. also made me have boundaries, like even with my yeah. family um, and being able to express myself, what I believe in and stand firm on it. I think it's really important to talk about the mental health effect that it has waking up. Hey. We did kind of talk about it, but not necessarily. Yeah. Like how did yeah. you feel? I think we covered it a little bit in the first video, but how did you feel as a Jehovah's Witness within the organization? All right, so it's levels to this. In the beginning, it was like you high on life and you feel like you're doing everything right, and then it just declines and you get, we all got tired, obviously. That's how we ended up here. Every single witness is tired, but we are That's always- That's an understatement. Yeah, it's like exhaustion. Really, but you always being told just the best life ever and just a little bit longer. And you, you try to keep running and keep running. But you exhausted. And I, I felt exhausted for years. Yeah. And, and I, they do that on purpose. Like, it, it's like they want to keep you exhausted on purpose. And it's so crazy because mm -hmm. at the beginning when you're first coming in, it's so much encouragement. And they're constantly talking life into you. Like, yeah. oh, you can do this. And there's all of these things that you can do. Yep. But once you start achieving those goals, then it's... It is like a toxic relationship. They start nitpicking at you. Like, yeah. oh, well, you can do this better. Oh, you're not doing this good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't say those exact words, but that's how it makes you feel. Right. So it's like they slowly take away those little speaking life into you moments. Right. That is facts. And think about how there's no limit. I remember the first time we got through the whole Bible for the Bible reading each you know, week meeting. Yes. And then us getting a revelation. It's like, cool, we almost done. Then we started back at Genesis. I'm like, All over in the back of my mind, I'm like, we going to be doing this forever. And there's always a new book. Always. Yeah. Like, it was just crazy. And they yeah. always wanted you to put more hours in. It was like yeah. constant reminders of, you need to go out and service more. Yeah. Oh, you need to become a pioneer. You don't have this title yet. Yeah, that's what you should be working yeah, you toward. Should be a servant. Even I whenever we first started dating, like that was an issue. Like mm -hmm. with our out, neither one of us held titles in the organization. Right. And um, we almost broke up over it. Like, yeah, we like did it, for like a day, and then we were like, "Oh, this is not working." Right. Because it's like, and even your parents were like, Lexi's elders had tried to convince her we shouldn't be dating, and Lexi's parents was like. What? what? Don't, like, don't listen. Because they, they yeah. didn't know him at all. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's crazy because they used, they used my, um, what's it called? Discipline committee? committee judicial or, committee. Yeah, they used my yeah. judicial committee to talk about our relationship instead of talking about what the judicial committee was actually about. Like, right. So, oh, speaking of, I meant to share this on the last one. While I was inactive, they tried to sneak and disfellowship me, basically. Now, how this worked out, I my, didn't know that. Yeah, so the elder that I had, that I, I got reinstated, I was studying with this elder, but I just was like halfway into it, missing meetings. And so one time I finally went to the meeting after missing like a month or two, and he's like, hey, uh, I want to just stop by, man, just catch up with you. I'm like, all right, cool. So that was on that Saturday. So Thursday the meeting comes, and we were supposed to meet this weekend. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, we still on for Saturday? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, uh. If you don't mind, Brother Baker's going, he's going to join me. At that point, I knew this is not you being genuine trying to check up on me. This is a shepherding call. Yeah. Trying to come and be nosy. So I was just like, okay. So they come over and they're just like, yeah, man, we're just seeing how things are going. And they read some scriptures. And then it's, you know, so what have you been up to? Because, you know, usually when people are missing meetings, 
they get into other things, you know. And at this point, I had already been disfellowship once, and I had only been back for maybe six months or maybe no, I'm sorry, a year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not about to be disfellowship right now. I didn't say that out loud, but I'm like, I've just been chilling, you know. And they're like, well, you sure? And they were like prying and prying for something. And I had nothing to tell them. I was like somebody in the interrogation room. like, no. No, I've just been <laughs> working, really just working and just re exhausted. And then like at the end, they seen I wasn't budging. And, and they played the, you know, we love you and we look forward to hearing your comment on Sunday. And at that point, that's when I really like faded out. Because they were looking for a reason to just be nosy and be controlling. Yeah. You know, and that's just... It's a high control yeah. group. And mentally, it's just, it's a lot. So you are exhausted. And then mm -hmm. when you wake up, it's like, it's a mix of emotions. You feel relieved because it's like all yeah. this, especially if you are like depressed and tired at the time and you wake up, it's like all this stuff to been on your shoulders is just lifted. But at the same time, you just, you confused at the same time. Yeah, and you feel like at the beginning, it's almost like you feel, oh, does the devil have a hold of me? Like, is this, yeah. is this what it is? Because that's what they tell you. They say... You know, Thanks. if you leave, like, you're going to have an awful life and all these bad things are going to happen to you yeah. and the devil has a hold of you. And it's just crazy because, yeah, we went through, like, emotional welfare in a way, but right. the what happened after we woke up was, like, the opposite of what we expected yeah. in a way. Life or what, have, what I expected. Me too. Like, I expected life to become harder and for everything that they said to become true and yep. it was literally the exact opposite i i felt like life got a lot easier it got mm. a lot lighter like i wasn't so focused yeah, on yeah. negative things i wasn't focused on all the negative stuff happening in the news i wasn't right. controlled by fear i was heavily controlled by fear when i was a jehovah's yeah. witness as a witness you don't want to look like the person that they talk about on the platform or show and you know the, the movies and the dramas, the person that not they're not putting forward all the effort mm -hmm. to raise their hand or go out the, to, to service after the meetings. And all right, you, you work a full time, so you can't full time pioneer, but can you auxiliary pioneer? And now right. you're weighing out, man, I do, I work 10 hours, but it, if I could do 10 hours for the world, I guess I could do two hours of service after a yes. long work day. But you feel guilty, but no, that's not. That's not cool. I was fearful of everything. I was I was not just afraid of what people would think of me, but I was afraid yeah. of what Jehovah might think of me. I was right. afraid of the people in the world, you know, like get letting worldly people get too close to me because yeah. I didn't want um, you know, I didn't want to be looked at as like bad association right. or anything like that. And I was just afraid of the day-to-day -day stuff, like just the yeah. I don't know, I was afraid of everything. I because yeah, they're so heavily should, focused yeah. on the news and everything like that. And they're constantly looking at those kinds of things. And it makes yeah. life feel so heavy. And the crazy part, you they focus so much on Satan's world and the news, except for the news about the organization. That's a lie. <laughs> but everything else is the truth is the about truth? the world. Yeah. That's, that's something that it can just be exhausting being in an organization. Definitely exhausting. And I, they keep you there for a reason so that you don't have the energy to mm -hmm. even critically think for yourself. Yeah, you get exhausted. And once you wake up, you go through those emotions, and afterwards, you start to realize who you really are. Once you get past the hard yeah. part of this ain't the truth, what am I going to do? You question a lot of things. You question, is, is God real? Is the Bible real? Is Satan real? Right. Because I, I went through a, a period before waking up, I was listening to like interviews from... like. Uh, Farrakhan and people like they were Muslims and I'm like that makes sense but then there were other things I'm like I don't agree with that and then I got <laughs> to the point once I found out about the organization I'm like religion I'm done with religion that's that's bogus not to speak down to anybody else's beliefs but I don't believe in religion at all mm -hmm. and I was afraid of that for the longest because I thought if you didn't believe in anything you just walk around feeling lost. I I walk around feeling exact exact opposite. I feel yeah, free. Me too. I feel I feel totally free. And they, I remember them talking about having like an open mind. It's kind of looked down upon. Like, mm. oh, you're open to to demons taking control over you and all of these things. But yeah. um, separating myself from religious groups in general has mm. helped so much. It's crazy because I feel like I identify with them 
even more than I did when I was a part of a religion. Like right. whenever a religious person comes and they talk to me, I can just talk to them like a human being and I yeah. can, you know, I can empathize with what they're saying and I can listen yeah. to what they're saying and there's no disrespect, nothing like that. It's just I'm allowed to believe what I believe and you can believe what you believe, you know, but right. I still feel spiritually connected to them because yeah. I feel like what we believe is like it's it's over religion. You know what right. I mean? It's not just you're not in this closed mind thinking it's, of like this is the only group that is chosen by God. Yeah. Instead, you're like, okay, like I can relate to you on many levels. We're both li living creatures, you know? Yeah, like, and you don't learn that in the organization. No. You are, and I had this conversation with my uncle. One thing we covered was uh, this was a good one. I said, all right, Unc, in the organization, if I say I want to be a regular pioneer, how would y'all feel? The whole family would be happy. If I said I want to play in the NFL, how would y'all feel? Y'all would be disappointed. <laughs> now point me to the scripture where I'm required to do 70 hours in field service. Crickets. Yeah. He couldn't answer that. I'm like, so why are we forced to follow? I'm like, ministerial service. If your daughter is dating a young brother, first thing you ask, is he a servant? If you say, yeah, how do y'all feel? If you say, no, do y'all look at him as less than? And they he, do. He didn't want to admit it, but it's the truth. I'm they like, do. now point me to the scripture that says you have to be a ministerial servant. Yeah. And I think that even searching out for those titles is almost, it's disingenuous, you know, because right. you're doing it, you're not doing it for yourself and they make you think that you're doing it for God, but really you're doing it for other people and you're, you're yeah. doing it so that you have this status and this title so that it looks like you're a better person. Right. But it's nothing but a title at the end of the day. It's it's basically like a, a job. You a supervisor at this job, but once you leave this job, who are you? Yeah. You can't go, you can't walk into the grocery store and boss people around or go home and, and tell everybody what to do. You just a supervisor at work. And this kind of the organization makes you feel like you a supervisor everywhere. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an elder. Everywhere you go, <laughs> I'm an elder. I'm to be right, respected. Right, exactly. Yeah. And they don't, they don't really carry themselves like that. Like a lot of them do have a lot of humility, but... Mm -hmm. We all know what it is, like, under, you know, under the title and everything. <laughs> yeah. So religion, I explain religion like the NFL team. When somebody asks, you know, what's your religion? What do you believe in? I don't I don't believe in religion. Also, you're an atheist. No. no. I don't belong to anything. <laughs> it's like if you tell me you are a, a Steelers fan and you say, no, what football team you like? I don't like football. There's no other team you can say that I belong to. I don't even watch football. That's right. the same thing with religion. I'm not in a religion. You can't put me in any type of box. And it's so hard for people to accept that, like, of any yeah. religious group. Because I've talked to other um, people, and mm -hmm. it's so hard for them to accept the fact that you're not part of a religion. They feel like, oh, well, you don't believe in God. And it's like, no, I never, I never said that. You assume that of me because yeah. of what I said. Right. And meanwhile, there's how many different religions? There's like thousands of religions and thousands of gods. And yeah. every single person thinks that their their religious group are the chosen people. There are thousands of them. They all, what they have in common, they believe there's thousands of religions and all of them are wrong except one. Now, which one of the thousands are you? I just feel like they all wrong. There is no one that got it right. Mm -mm. That's I think only it's one a, digit. For me, I feel like it's a mix of all of them. Like, everybody holds, like, little pieces of the truth, uh -huh. you know? Because I'm not going to say Jehovah's Witnesses are completely wrong. You know, like, the, the basis standard that they teach is right. Like, treat right. people well, you know? But yeah. other people teach the same thing. So. Yeah, yeah. It comes from, religion itself comes from the top of the pyramid here has the qualities of life. Yeah. How to treat people. You take that and every man grabs it and they put their own their own ingredients their in own it. Little skin. And every so your main ingredient is seasoning salt. Mm -hmm. Now this person adds seasoning salt with cinnamon. This person add onion powder. This person add garlic powder. And everybody's saying this is it because this got seasoning salt in it. In reality, <laughs> they all, they all came from the seasoning salt. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. We're all living creatures. We're all spiritually connected, but. Yeah. It's like religious religion to me has been made to divide and not to unify. Right. And it's been made so that each group thinks that they're they're just the ultimate. When you officially wake up and you start to find your journey in life and find peace, you reach real happiness. Like right now we found our peace and happiness, but in the organization you've been taught for so long 
that you would never find happiness outside of this this realm. We compared it to a domestic violence relationship. This man is abusing this woman, but and he, he's telling her, "You'll never yeah, have better. This the best you ever gonna get. Ain't nobody gonna love you." And this and you looking like, why she don't leave? But in yeah. her mind, there's nothing better for me. But once you get out there, that's the only way to, to understand things are better. And the one thing you're always going to hear from the organization, Satan has them confused, thinking that they are happy. Yep. But Satan's blessing them with all these, these things, like a good job and stuff like that. <laughs> but my question is, how do you explain the bad things happening to you? Exactly. Because my grandmother was in the organization from the 70s up until when she passed in 2019. And she did it. When I say everything by the book, she was a pioneer up until she got cancer and she did the best she could writing uh, letters and on the phone and she did everything and she died tragically like sick, gradually, gradually and got sick. And my thing was, if she did everything right, this is the result. Right. So is that Satan? Because then <laughs> once you, is, you, you leave the organization, you find happiness. That's also Satan, too. So Satan is just doing good stuff and bad stuff. It, it doesn't align. No. At the end of the day, good good things and bad things happen to everybody. But everybody. I will say, like, once we left, I've never felt the kind of peace that I felt feel now, like, while I was in the organization. Like, yeah, never. Never. It's I, always something to worry about. Yeah. It's like the waters were, like, storming and they were going hard. And now it just feels at ease this is mellow and it doesn't mean like i'm not trying to make it seem like our lives are perfect or anything like that but right. it's it's like our way to deal with things is so much better and yeah we don't have to be confined in these little boxes they don't even want you to attain certain assets like they don't right. want you they almost they want you to stay poor they, yeah they almost praise like pro poverty yeah. Like if you're doing poverty, but it's if it's in the name of God, then that is amazing. Yeah, but if you are the the brothers and sisters in the organization or in the congregation that had a little more paper, they were kind of looked at like you know they they, would get they talked value about. yeah Let's be real. they like, get they talked, about talked about in the car in spill service. Like why does he why does he come in here with that flashy car and the yeah. you know they have a really big house, but they don't really need that much space. It's yeah. it's just always these like negative. In slick, slick comments. Yeah. It's like slight shade, but they don't want to overshade. They have to shade it over and act like it's a God thing. You right. Know? Like oh, they that's facts. They should be more, hu more humble. Yeah, they should do more what the organization tells them to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, but in reality, it's like a, you know. Which is crazy because then Bethel will ask for, like, lawyers and stuff, but they tell you, don't go and be a lawyer. Don't yeah. go and be a doctor. Don't go and get this lavish career. But we do, if you do happen to have this degree, please let us know so that you can come work for us for free. And another thing <laughs> that materially, they tore down or they got rid of the original Bethel and bought acres and acres of land when the world is supposed to end and they own all these investment portfolios that are long-term ones. And not and just that, the they have it's like tax-free. Like they get yeah. all these tax benefits because they're a non-profit organization. Right, and then if you look at the organization, I explained to my uncle, I'm like, it's a real estate type of thing. I'm like, you get all these people to build. Where else can you get people to build something for you for free? For free. And, and they're then, doing it off of off of the guise of, oh, this is for God. They do it for free, and then they turn around and sell it down the line. Yeah. A bunch of these kingdom halls are getting sold. Where's the money going if, if one of the friends is, is about to get evicted from the house? You can't call... Bethel and say, hey, I'm messed up. I will say the Jehovah's Witness organization has great business skills. Right. Like they have really capitalized off of off of the backs of other people and the rest yeah. of the Jehovah's Witnesses. They get uh, it's just crazy how that works. Like literally free labor in building yeah. their churches. And then sell them when, when things start to slow up, you can always make money. But to wrap everything up. The best thing you can do is find your own community after, you know, you wake up. As yeah. you see, there's a lot of us, thousands, probably millions, I don't know, a lot of us online that watch these videos and we share our stories with each other and we stay in touch. That's a community then, for once, the people you work with, you can actually be friends with these people or, or at least mingle with them. You might find, you know, one cool friend from work or you yeah. go to the gym or you 
play some type of activity, mm-hmm. some type of hobby. You meet people there, and it's not the end of the world. These and the it's not. the thing is, you never lose a real friend. Yes, I have yeah. found so many better friends um, outside of the organization than within. You know, like within the organization, that I really felt like they were my friends. But at the end of the day, it stands on this basis. Like you have to believe this, and right. you have to follow this God, or else you don't get to be my friend. Yeah. I still have love for you, but you're not really like we yeah. can't hang out, and I can't talk to you. It's conditional love. It's, it's not very unconditional. conditional. Yeah. So you didn't. The people, if somebody is really a friend. Once you leave the organization, they still going to rock with you. Yeah. And and understanding y'all have different points of view, a real friend could care less because that's how it is in the real world. A lot of there are friends that have rival football teams or different upbringings, like different music, like have different beliefs. One friend could be, you know, a Baptist and the other one don't believe in God, but they still cool. They just, that's a topic they just leave alone because so what? We could still be friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even in relationships, like you're always going to have, you know, maybe different beliefs. You're not going to agree on everything. So it to right. me, it is so unrealistic to think that, you know, you're just going to agree with everything. Yeah. And that's how your friends are going to be. But yeah, y'all can disagree on some things like things are like morally just crazy. Mm-hmm. That's different. But just the basic something as simple as I believe in Buddha. You believe in Allah. That's cool. Yeah. We both believe in being good people, and that right there should be enough. But that's just something to, to understand about yeah. waking up. That's that's the thing. Those are things that connect people, and they try so hard to divide people. Right. Not, you know, like the world does everything to try to divide people. In reality, we all just having a human experience. <laughs> that's right. all it's about. But we'll drop another part to this next time. Will be. We'll compare religion to spirituality. That I think that'd be oh, a good discussion. Oh, I like that topic. Yeah. Because it, it is so interesting to me to see what um, other people end up believing after they leave, like, a high-control religious group. Yeah, for real. Yeah, like, some people go on to other religions, and some, like, become atheists completely. Yeah. And, you know, we, we have taken the spirituality route, and that's what works for us, and that's what... That's what feels good. Yeah, we uh, we won't touch too much on it. We'll save that for part three. <laughs> but uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe. Give us y'all feedback. Give us y'all stories. And thank you so much for the feedback on the last video. Y'all are yeah, great. Most definitely. We'll catch y'all next time. Bye.